Hello YouTube. Today I want to show you how to make a rondel dagger like this one or blunt version like we make today out of a triangle cross section scraper, metal scraper. Pretty cheap to get, around 10 bucks. I got him for 5. Special price offer. First of all, we need to remove the handle. Pretty easy. Get it in a vise, knock it off with a hammer. Did that before. You can see now you have a grip for a file or something else which you could use again. It's pretty normal grip normally, wood. Pretty nice. Yeah. And what we got left is a blade, a scraper blade. It's hardened in the front, just about 10 centimeters or 4 inches are hardened. The rest is pretty soft. At this point, here is weak steel. You feel it, the file bites into it, and here it starts scraping off. And here it's just slitting over it like glass. Yeah. So only the almost tip of these things are hardened, uh, but that's more than enough for a dagger and a rondel dagger because the triangle cross section is very stable in itself, has a very high grit here, which gives stability and the hollow grind in the middle or the hollow shape in the middle makes it very light weight and the tip is very durable with its hardness. What I did with this blade, this is going to be the blunt version. Took a ball bearing, steel ball. I'm gonna weld it up here, because here at the end we're gonna weld a rod about seven millimeters, six to seven millimeters, and about six centimeters in length. We're gonna weld on here for holding the grip and riveting the back side so the whole dagger holds together very well. What I did to this, as I said I heated up the tip for getting it weak but not just that so also remove the color. Uh, the color rest I removed with a paint remover. The corners are rounded off on my belt sander here so you could make it with common tools too as the steel is weak you can use a normal file for filing this up to the tip no problem when you weaken it uh, but you need a welder to weld on the tip the ball bearing for safe sparring good thing about the triangle shape is you can put it in a lathe very well it spins almost perfect around and what I did is I turned over this surfaces these three surfaces and the corner here, I made a very sharp 90 degree corner that's for fitting the rondels so the rondels fit perfect at the edge because it gets pressure from all three corners and that makes it very stable nothing rattling and it's most thought for thrusting anyway yeah, and what I also use are these wooden handles just a wooden dowel with an extension on this side and their proper use was for a hammer not this hatchet not for a hammer and this one I bought on a supply store for about six bucks and the wooden dowels I couldn't use until now use them as a handle for the daggers and out of this I cut off the end and forged this one but that you will see in another video and you can put a link in the description but I didn't I don't have a video until now so I need to make one how to forge these axes you can make different forms, different styles, however you want the hole I make in an oval shape now like more an X shape and it gets thinner here and looks much better and the handles I can't use them anymore so I made my own out of good wood uh, hickory or something and yeah you will see that in another video okay what I have here is a setup 
trying to weld the ball from the center exactly on the rod. The tip itself moves pretty nice, but the ball, no. As you can see when I turn it, the offset gets more and less. And here, at the smallest point, I have to get it a hit, turn that up. I guess that's it. That's it for today.
Yeah, I'm gonna use templates. First dagger I made. Um, Okay, we're gonna find out at the belt center. Okay, yeah, back in the belt center. I'm gonna stand down bird here. that inside and uh, we need to file out a little bit for a triangle shape so it cannot the grip cannot turn on the handle cannot turn on the dagger and uh, tip gonna grind next another grinding use safety goggles clean safety goggles <laughs> and yeah File test and it's filing. Even the ball bearing is fileable. So, well, it's spot is fileable too. But just for safety reasons and for the heck of the fun of it. dark blue here it's it's uh, getting light blue again and here it's almost purple to blue 
pretty nice color, game of colors. And we're gonna let that cool down again on air. So it's getting soft, it stays soft. And then are we gonna polish it up? I think that's beautiful enough for a sparring tool. And next thing we're gonna weld on the handle at the other end and temper it again. Go back again. Try to file in triangle or gonna file gonna file in the triangular shape of the blade so it fits in and won't turn around any direction. So I use a triangular cross section file. So we get a rough fit here, triangular shape. Now we're gonna make the discs. The steel discs. I've already prepared two discs. We got these tin discs, steel discs, three millimeter, fifty millimeter in diameter, in diameter. Um, prepared them already. Just heated them up and brushed them with a the brush. So they look a bit old. And make indents like this. Turn it around 180 degrees. pretty good and the same with the second we need to see that I think make about the same just maybe two impressions on both sides as before I use a sander drill to get the holes inside and then a 7.0 drill to make the holes So we're gonna put in an octagon shape here, eight corners, we do that with a square file, or I do that with a square file, just try and push the square through.
Okay. Try to fit in this piece here. And as you see, a bit of hammering brings absolutely nice results. And it holds up so tight. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Now we got the rod, blade, new handle, which fits perfectly. And now we get to cut off the rod. The rod has to be about this length. About. We're gonna cut it again. When final mounting comes, when it's up to riveting, we're gonna cut the handle again to the exact length we need. And finished as you see that on just pulling down the tip so I can hold it a bit be better. It really could not be better at all. Put it down. Okay, as you can see, grind it off the whole material. Grind it off the whole material here. And next. I'm gonna 
gonna heat it up again to blue color. Glowing almost, no, but almost. Yeah, let it cool off slow again, and then we can start mounting the whole thing. Now we need to polish the tip. That's one thing. With the edges, we can polish too. The same process. Here, I need to get a finer grit before polishing on. And it shines like a diamond. About like this should look in the end. Just nice and beautiful. So start off with the first cut here. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, now we have uh, grabbed on, glued on the leather wrapping. Here it's not that beautiful, but okay. It's very grippy, very grippy. And now we're gonna grind off the over the offset leather. Just leave a little bit leather offset so we can grind it off and then it's absolutely perfect flush with the wood. Back of the belt sander. Now we're gonna grind off the leather. Yeah, now we're perfect with the leather and fits perfectly on the handle. As you see, fits perfectly with the marking. But fits perfectly together. Sorry, a bit near. Close up look. You can have um, the end part. Let's rivet. This also is a stress test for the tip. If the tip now breaks, bends or something else, and I can throw the dagger away. Now I made a four point. Now I hit in between the points. As you see, the material starts to stretch. And those points are made exactly where the notches, the octagon notches are in the disc. Try to fit that perfectly so the disc can't move anymore. Okay, let's have a look to the tip. It looks nice and even. Nothing happened to the tip, so I guess it's probably made because the aluminum is dented very well. It fits absolutely tight. See that? That's awesome. That's a nice rubber dagger. Yeah. If you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe. Hope you like the video. Because that's it for today. If you want to see more videos like this, or reviews, or anything, if you have some questions or requests, just send me a message or leave me a comment below and thanks for watching.